Hi, this is Chloe from Inner Whispers, and today's unboxing is of The Fairy Forest, an oracle of the wild green world. This is created, or published at least, by Blue Angel, and it has artwork by Maxine Gerd and text by Lucy Cavendish. Nice, sturdy box. Let's break into it. So as I say, it's a very firm box, which uh, just pulls out, no magnetic catches here. And inside we have a book with the same images on the front. Um, and it's you know, fairly small, so smaller than a novel, but it is a nice thickness. And we have over 136 pages, well, if you're including the bits at the back, which are other decks also available from Blue Angel Publishing, something about the artist and the author. Um, let's go to the front to see it from the beginning. A dedication, may the wild green world and the wondrous beings of this fairy forest heal us, inspire us and urge us all to become more who we truly are meant to be for the good of our most enchanted and divine planet, so mote it be. Then if we look we have most of it is about the cards, which isn't a bad thing. And we have the path into the fairy forest, a little bit there. Enter the great tree, the gateway to the fairy forest, who dwells in this fairy forest. Working with this oracle, can I read the cards for myself? Quite obvious question, okay. A card a day, the path to knowledge, resisting the message. Bonding with the beings of the fairy forest, the unique qualities of this deck, what do reversed cards mean? And if another person handles my deck, will their energy be, be transferred to my cards? Their answer is yes, it will, but we can simply and easily cleanse and refresh the energy of our cards. Then how to work with the fairy forest, blessing and connecting with your cards, dedicating your deck, setting the space for your readings, shuffling, keeping your readings flowing, pure and in integrity. Spreads and layouts, so we have a past, present, future spread, um, the Celtic cross, and the cycles of the moon spread, that's quite nice. So it's waning moon, dark moon, new moon, waxing moon, and full moon. So. And then we have the Fairy Forest Tree Spread, an 11 card spread. And that's it, then we move into the cards themselves with a grayscale scan of each and um, the keyword, the sub keywords and a little description. So there's not that much text on any of these, less than a lot of the other Lucy Cavendish decks that I've seen. Uh, but it's, you know, she's a nice writer generally. Let's take a look at the cards themselves. So they're a nice size, reasonably big, so that you can see the image as well. Um, let me quickly cut this. So I first saw this deck coming up on my Amazon feed for, you know, things you might like. It knows me well. Uh, but I resisted until I saw them on Angelorum and I've been wanting to sort of get more into my spiritual side again, shall we say? So this seemed like a good deck for that with its big fairy focus. So we have the cunning woman, silent, observant and wily. There's a kind of fox image here and the lovely squirrel, which is my totem animal. Duira, healer, nourishment, nurture. The images, some of them seem almost photographic. Others are more obviously painted. Like this one is more of a photographic, photoshopped image. And then we have another drawn one. So photographic and more drawn again. They almost seem to be alternating at the moment. The images are very beautiful, whether photographic or more drawn. 
I prefer drawn, drawn generally myself, but here another sort of looks quite photoshopped image. There's a lot of colour, a lot of redheads. <laughs> and yes, they really are very lovely though with, they're not all pretty, pretty nice, if you know what I mean. Like we have the wizard here, rune king, wise one counsellor. And these also, soul kin. Oh. Eerie, I guess, is one of the words that comes to mind. Faintly haunting. So, yes, not your Disney type fairies. We have tricksters and the unseelie queen who looks like she could do some mischief. Blood month, suff sacrifice offerings, decision. Promise and pledge. So they're faintly creepy in some ways, if, or otherworldly more than creepy perhaps, but not overly nice and sweet, which is a good thing. Weaver. When I uh, moved house, I put away my fairy altar, and I haven't ever quite gotten it back out because my little one still gets into everything and everywhere and I'm missing it, so a she who laughs, humour, perspective and mirth. Yes, I need a little bit more of that in my life, the otherworldliness. A fun green man, and the life bringer looks like a green woman, but by a different name, so they Make a very nice pair. The Yule Singer. The Mabon. So we have some for kind of times of year. The Sigil Keeper. King of the Darkwood Elves. Queen of the Darkwood Elves. We also had the Unseelie Queen, but I don't remember seeing an Unseelie King. Bliss. A unicorn, the other world, quite dark, and the ancient. So there's humour in these, as well as darkness and light, a nice mix. The backs are totally non-reversible with this lovely door into the other world, and there's a kind of witch on a broom and a little green goblin or and a black kitten. So a very lovely image. The cards feel about the size that you normally get for Blue Angel and also good quality. I know that sometimes when these decks have sort of been published in the States after starting out with Blue Angel, the cardstock quality has gone down. But this cardstock feels very nice. It's firm, it shuffles well. It feels solid, flexible, good to the hand. I like this a lot. Um, and let's have a little message. <laughs> so this is Astrild. Love fire, sensuality, fertility. Blessed be.